In assignment three, you're going to add a few new uh, items to your um, project. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to we add we want to talk about some milestones, predecessors, some resource constraints, and then uh, also make a, a Gantt chart. So that's what I want you to be able to get to um, this week. So during this module, you know the when you open up the um, the PDF for this week. First thing it's telling you to do is add a new tab called HR Constraints. And then HR Constraints, you're just going to go ahead and you're going to put in um, the data that's listed here. Uh, what's really going on with these HR Constraints is that you don't really own anybody in a project. Uh, people are kind of put to you on a, a, a loaner basis, and you just have to go through and you have to you know use people as little or as you know, as much as they want to be used. In this case, Tony Espinoza can only be used up to four hours a week. Um, Chin Chu can only be used up to six hours. I mean, you get the point here. Um, these are just constraints. This is just something that you, you know, that we can't use these people more than four hours a week, and we'll find a way to track that in the future. On the second page of your PDF, you're going to see that we add milestones. So you're going to create a new tab called Milestones, and in Milestones, you're going to put in one um, column that lists the major events that are going to happen. So in early planning, we know we've got to have a budget that's going to be a deliverable, and a deliverable or a milestone um, really, milestones really talk about the uh, an item that has to be delivered, like a budget, or um, a actual physical document like a general plan or a final plan. So milestones really do tell us, you know, hey, there, there are dates that are coming up that we have specific little things that need to be done so that we can go back at the very end and make sure that everything is finished by day 30, okay? So you're gonna put in a column A with all of the information. You're gonna put in a column B Column B is, this is the number of days from the start, okay? Um, and these are given to you. So, you know, the boss would be the one that came in and said, hey, I'll, you know, by day three, I need a budget. Or maybe they tell you that you need the general plan by day seven, and you say, wait a second, I need, that means I need to get a budget by this day and a communication plan by another day. So you can see column B is all of the information that has been handed to you. And then the next column is the delivery date. When does this have to be done? Um, again, this is for planning purposes only. You should put in here in the delivery date for a start date. And again, when you put start date in here, this is going to be the date that you start. You probably won't start on September 15th. 2022. All right, it's going to be a different day. So your delivery date should be something other than that. And then put in a formula. So look here what happens. If I start on the 15th, it takes me three days to get all of it done. Then I can go in and I can add the dates here on uh, by putting in a formula. So again, if I put in a formula, where I say this box is B4 plus C2. However, C2, I don't want this to change because in a minute I'm going to, I'm going to drag these through. Um, so I can lock down this block by putting a dollar sign in front of the C, which says lock down the column, and a dollar sign in front of the 2, which says lock down the second row. What that does for me is that allows me to, if I left click on this box, I can left click in the bottom corner and drag it, and you can see that it auto fills in all of those dates for me. Okay, so there are the delivery dates on there, um, and we could go in and we could argue that this isn't really work days, but I'm just trying to get you to, to get a feel for um, how to get delivery dates set up and, and moving forward as well. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to start looking at what we call predecessors. Predecessors are things that occur before 
um, another task can occur. So if we go back over to the time uh, tab and we insert a new column called predecessor, I can go through and I can say which of these tasks naturally, normally, need to be completed before the next task. So like develop a budget. Develop a budget, I really probably need to have um, my agenda and schedule set before I set the budget. So the predecessor is two, which tells me that's task two. Similarly, here, for publish a general plan, the general plan is really made up of task two, three, four, five, and six. So I can't finish the general plan until I have done two, three, four, five, and six. All of those have to be done. Similarly, down here, you can see that I shouldn't do a kickoff meeting until I have a general plan done. Um, and then you can go through and, and see naturally how these other things played out. So again, that is how I'm going to put together a uh, the predecessors. Predecessors in this case are given to you. There may be other times though that you will have to come up with those predecessors yourself or the boss may come in to you and say, you know, that logically, you know, we can't discuss the top three venues until you have gone through and uh, determined who's on the guest list. You know, whatever it may be that, uh, that uh, a predecessor could be put in there uh, for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, again, not every predecessor has a task. Some, prede some of the uh, tasks, sorry, some of the tasks don't have a predecessor. Some of the tasks have more than one predecessor. And there are times whenever we can, in this case here, task three, four, five, or six could all be done after task two is done. So these could be done simultaneously. <clears throat> okay. Um, next thing that we want to do is we want to start moving towards making a graphic representation of um, our task. And the way we're going to do that is we need to come in here for the Gantt chart. We need to add two new columns. I need to add a day start, <coughs> excuse me, and an end day. So a start day and an end day. And what the start day and the end day is telling me is let's start putting together a flow chart of when we're going to get all these things accomplished. So you can look through here. Everything has a predecessor, you know, except for develop agenda and schedule. Um, probably makes sense for early planning that this is the very first thing we, we're going to get started with. The boss says they want to start immediately. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to start develop agenda and schedule on day one. Now, how long is it going to take me to finish it? Um, there's only eight hours required. I'm the only person assigned to it, or you, in the case of your project. I can work an eight-hour day. So if I start on day one, I can finish on day one, right? Next, develop a budget. I chose to go ahead and do it second. You could have done three, four, five, or six based on you. I decided to start with uh, develop a budget. So I'm going to start it on day two. It takes me eight hours to do it. I'm going to have to coordinate with Tony Espinosa to make sure Tony can do it on that day. But, you know, I can start on day two. I can finish on day two because it's only eight hours. Similarly, with develop a communication plan, I can start on day three and on day three. But then look here on task five. I can start on day four, but it takes me 16 hours to finish it. So I'll have to work on it all day four and all day five. So I'm going to start on day four. I'm going to go through day five. Make team assignments. It takes me eight hours to do that. I'm going to do that on day six. Publish the general plan. It takes me eight hours to do that. I'm going to do that on day seven. Okay, so you can see where I've started here. Start days, end days. Um, we can also now go back up and say, wait a second, for early planning, now that I have done everything for these boxes, I can set the start day and the end day for my early planning. Um, and I can just look down through here and 
try to find the earliest day, right, which is 1, or I can put in a function here. I can put equals min and then all of the days that I'm looking at. Similarly, for the end day, I'm looking for when the last point is that I have to finish. So this really is equals max of those days. You go ahead and you fill in um, the rest of the days here for planning all the way through. Use the min and the max features to set up a start day for the planning and an end day for the planning. Um, also the same thing for choose a venue. You're going to have a start and an end day for choosing a, a venue. And then once you get all of your days in here, it's finally time to take this and put it into a Gantt chart. Now the Gantt chart, instead of bringing all of the information over from time, I really want to just deal with the tasks, the start day and the end day. So what I'm gonna do here, you can see mine's already filled out, but if you are gonna start with a blank sheet, as a matter of fact, I'll just start with a blank sheet here for you. Um, I, if I type in equals and then go over here to time, and what I'm interested in is starting here. You can see it brings it over for me. Task. I want to go ahead and take both task and the next thing, which is the name. If I left click this bottom right corner and drag it over, you see name comes over. And now if I right click and drag, all of my tasks come over with it as well. The next thing that I want to bring over are the start and end times. So equals, back to time, day start, I want day start, I want day end, I want these dates to come with me. And what I'm doing here is I am making a copy of time. And the reason I'm making a copy is that as you go through your project, you are going to change these start dates and you're going to change these end dates. And so if you just make changes here, back here on your Gantt chart, it's going to bring that with you. Okay. So again, that should get you set up. You can see that I have my start day, end day. After you've done that, we have 30 days that we're going to work. So type in day one, day two, day three. And once you get days one, two, and three set, you can right click in this bottom right corner and Excel will actually let you click and drag out all the way to there um, the days. It's, it's expecting things like that to happen. Next graphical representation. This says early planning is going to start on day one. It's going to go through day seven. I have put some conditional formatting in here. I shouldn't say conditional formatting. I have formatted um, this based on the, uh, the, the way the font is set on these. So if you clicked on all of these boxes, go to the home page, click on font, click on fill, find a color that you like, okay, click OK, and it will color those for you. Now instead of on each one of these other things, like task two starts on day one and ends on day uh, one. Instead of going back to that fill every time, one other thing that you can do to, to make things move faster, if you click on one of the blocks that you like, and you go here to the home page on the clipboard, and you click on this format painter, left click it, you can click on any block that you want, and it will give you the format that you're looking for. Just make sure that whenever you go through and click, again, you're going to click on the paintbrush and then go to the block that you want to have formatted and put it in there. That works for, you know, formatting either the, uh, the fill color or whatever else. What you should have when you finish all of this up, though, is a Gantt chart to where you can graphically look up and say, you know, what are my tasks? Which day am I going to get finished on? All right. Now you can see all of mine down here for planning have zeros and everything else on them because they're not finished yet. Um, you need to make sure yours are finished all the way through your final task. And 
you will also notice that your days right now may not match mine. What I'm looking for is that you've added these new um, HR constraint milestones, add the new columns for time, put in a new Gantt chart, and that ought to get you set up. Okay, that ought to take care of you for this task and just keep moving forward. Email me if you have questions.